Hi, this is Krista Joy with Special Needs for Special Kids, and today we are going to continue our talk about behavior. So last week I went over the four basic functions of behavior to escape, to get access to something tangible, to get attention, and then it sometimes it's just self-stimulatory or just gives them some kind of sensory input they are seeking. So I thought it would be helpful over the course of the next couple of weeks to look at each of those functions a little bit more deeply and with some more specific examples. So today I want to talk about the function of escape. And I think that this is something a lot of teachers in the classroom can um, identify with and can immediately, you can probably come up with scenarios where you dealt, have dealt with students having certain behaviors to escape a certain demand or task um, that you are placing on them. So let's think about, first of all, what does escape behavior often look like? And a lot of times, like I said, this is that behavior that, you know, you're telling the class to line up, you're telling someone to get out, you know, pencil and paper, and all of a sudden this behavior erupts, um, and it's as big, could be a temper tantrum, it can be a full out, you know, attack verbally, aggressively, something to keep them from completing the task that you just put in front of them. Sometimes the escape behavior can be very subtle and very quiet. Um, and so just realize that it's not always this big explosive act that happens. I've seen a lot of students kind of go into this very internal um, dialogue and scripting out loud, sometimes in their head that they do to kind of escape and block out the demands that you're placing on them. And they can do that, right? For a very long time, trying to block out and escape whatever that demand is. Um, so that is one of the big things when we're thinking about what does that behavior look like. The other thing to remember is that unless you're getting students super young, these escape behaviors that they are using, students have like tweaked and honed these to be so effective, right? So you're getting students, especially if you're in middle high school, you have students that have been practicing how to get out of doing work for years. And sadly, a lot of times that was reinforced. And so they come to you with a bag of tricks that is tried and true, and it's gonna take you a little while to um, work through those and figure that out. So just realize if you have older students, you have a little bit of a bigger mountain in front of you, but when you, once you climb it, you're done and it's gonna be smooth sailing on the other side. So that's pretty much what escape behavior looks like. It's some kind of immediate refusal, either physical, verbal, can be quiet, something in order to get out of doing the demand you just placed on them. So what are some clues? Um, what, does it, what are some things that we can kind of key into as observers and teachers to say, hmm, I think this might be an escape type of behavior. Again, it's gonna take some observation, right? Um, a functional behavior assessment is always the best tool. But if you don't have time for that or that's something that's not um, available to you at this time, what are some things that we can notice that maybe this is an escape behavior? So the first thing to notice is that the behavior was not occurring before you place the demand on the student. So in other words, they're probably quietly doing something of their own. You put a demand on them and then this behavior occurs. So that is the first thing to kind of look for. So the second point that I wanted to bring up about what escape behavior can look like is that a lot of times I think escape behavior is confused easily with they really just wanna get access to something tangible. And it can be kind of hard to tease that out, but a lot of times this happens when our students are enjoying a reinforcer that they've earned or a toy or something like that, and you ask them to put that away so that we can now transition into doing some other task. So the behavior erupts and then you have to ask yourself, is that because they can no longer have access to this reinforcement or toy, or is it because the activity I'm now presenting is something that they really just don't want to do? There are a couple ways to tease that out. One is to, if you're unsure, is to later try the same activity and allow them to continue to have access to the reinforcer um, as you present the activity. And then if the behavior does not occur, then it's more likely the removal of that reinforcer that's causing that behavior. Another thing you can do is take, transition them with some kind of you know countdown 
or a visual way that the time for the reinforcer is done and then transition into a little bit of a quiet, even if it's just three to five second period before you place the demand on them. So they're not coming one right after the other. And that way, if the behavior occurs in that instance, it's probably more likely that activity um, than it is the lack, loss of that reinforcer. Can it be both? Of course, <laughs> you can have dueling behaviors happening there. Um, and so it's, it's you, know, you know that behavior is not just a black and white field. It's definitely got some gray things, but I do think a lot of times people just assume the behavior is because they can no longer play with their iPad, they can no longer have access to the computer. But sometimes really the root of the problem is they're trying to escape whatever the activity is that is next. So the third thing is what are some interventions that would actually be appropriate when you have an escape type behavior. Again, you know, based on your functional behavior assessment that hopefully you or another behavior therapist with you will do, you'll develop an intervention plan, but let's just talk on a general level, what are some things you can do right away if you're pretty sure you have this escape behavior occurring? And I can think of three big things that I have found to be super effective in eliminating most of my escape behaviors. And I'm not talking like you do this and the behavior is gone the very first time you do it. It takes some consistency and work. And it also takes a little detective work to figure out what exactly is at the root of this escape. So the first thing I like to think or look at is the learning level of the activity that I am presenting. Most often, it's really just too challenging. And the student kind of knows it's too challenging. Either they've seen it before, they failed at it before, has a similar presentation of something they've seen before. It just seems and feels too hard and overwhelming. And so they don't want to have to do that. So is there some way that we can drop that difficulty level down? Sometimes the task is actually too easy. We have students in middle and high school that have some IEP goals and they have had them for 10 plus years. I know, I've seen that. Um, and although you are new to the student potentially, this goal is not new to the student and maybe they have been working on counting out coins for 10 years and it hasn't worked and they really don't care. They're not making a connection and it's not that it's too hard although maybe they don't fully understand it. It's just like, I've seen this a hundred times. I am not interested in doing this anymore. So the learning level can go either way. What do you do if you get into that situation and you realize like that, like, oh, I think this is too hard. You can really quickly make some adjustments on a piece of paper or you can cover some of the problems up. Do not remove the demand completely, but you can quickly try and change and modify it if you feel that the learning level is the reason that your student is having that behavior. What are some things you can do really quickly so they can complete the task, but it's at a better, more appropriate learning level? So that's the first thing. The second thing I think of is the presentation of the material itself. So today in classrooms, we have so many options when it comes to presenting material. We can do the cut and paste worksheets, which is still probably my favorite way to do it. But um, we have iPads, we have laptops, we have Chromebooks. Um, we have ways to project things up on the board that's interactive, like smart boards and Promethean boards. There are so many different ways you can take that same activity and change how it's presented to where it might be more engaging and exciting to your student and they are going to be less likely to escape from trying to do that activity. This is gonna be a little more difficult to change on the fly. If you're presenting a cut and paste worksheet and you realize that, oh, you know what? I know it's at the right learning level. Boy, this kid doesn't wanna do it. Maybe it's the fact that it's a cut and paste worksheet. Again, I would adjust it on the fly right then, maybe have them do one of the problems and then they get a break and then the next time you reintroduce it in a different presentation. The other thing to think about when it comes to presentation is how the students respond can make a huge difference. So instead of always giving them a pencil, maybe you can get some really cool markers that are scented. Some of them have glitter. You can get dot markers. You can, get, I don't know why, students love post-it notes. They love being able to write and record their answers on post-it notes and place them in the answer places instead of writing on the paper. Um, there are lots of different ways and 
really, you know, interesting ways that students can present their information or answers to you. So that's another thing that you can look to change up for them. The third thing I like to think of when I see an escape behavior is there some way that I can change the actual content of this lesson without changing the learning objective. So I wrote about this below, but I'm in a several Facebook groups of special education teachers because I like to understand exactly what the current issues are in the classroom since I'm not in there anymore and my kids are not in the school system, public school system anymore. I like to know what's really going on. And so um, this one teacher posted today, actually, that she has been struggling all year to get her students to complete a writing um, activity. And they, she works in a low income school. It sounds like her students are able to write, um, but still have some learning difficulties. And they just have flat out refused. And they've been belligerent and, and almost abusive about completing these um, activities. And she's been really frustrated. And she decided to change up the content and chose to kind of abandon the standard curriculum um, subject matter that she was given and try to do the same end result learning objective using information on the Titanic. And apparently these, this group of students was so enthralled and intrigued with the Titanic that every single one of them <laughs> completed their writing assignment even before it was due. She was like, I just can't believe how changing just the content or the subject matter um, inspired these students to, you know, kind of break out of that escape behavior and participate in the activity. Learning objective was still the same. So that's something else that you can think of. And I know like our students, so many of them have these kind of obsessive, um, compulsive interests that they have that they can perseverate on for hours. Is there some way we can intertwine and weave that into our content to make it more engaging and exciting for our students. And that is going to lessen the likelihood of escape. So those are some things to think about. If you're really struggling with escape behaviors, is there some way that you can change the learning level that you are presenting the material at? Is there some way you can change the presentation, either how you are presenting the material to the student or how the student is presenting the material back to you? And is there some way you can, you know, change up the content to make it more engaging, interesting, exciting for your students? Again, it doesn't happen right overnight. It's something behavior takes quite a while to mold, reshape, redirect, replace. Um, and so it takes some consistency. It takes some patience. Um, but if you go into it, with that attitude that I know this is going to take a little bit of time, but once you get that behavior shaped and in place, wow, the rest of it is such smooth sailing, but you do have to kind of climb that mountain first, especially if you have older students. So I hope that was helpful um, talking about escape behaviors. And if you have any thoughts or interventions you have tried, I would love for you to put them in the comments here or on the Facebook group. I am going to have for you um, a download of some common um, interventions you can use based on those three different um, ways to kind of mix up the, the material um, based on some of my personal experience, but also based on some research that I've done. And there'll be a nice cheat sheet for you to refer to um, just to kind of get your own juices flowing and thinking about things. So I hope that helps. I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday and I will see you next week. We will continue our talk about behavior and uh, I will see you then. Thanks.